Welcome to Come Run With Us. Today... What? What? We were just talking on the last show about how we kept getting the right name wrong. Are we calling it's it a project? This is the Come Run With Us project. This is, this is good. Our, okay, I'm going to restart. No, 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 no. It's a project. You don't you have, have to restart. This is all just okay, part well, of the Okay, well, welcome to the Come Run With Us project. You're Thank welcome. You. Um, I'm Wait. probably going to get fired in the next <laughs> couple weeks because I don't know the name of the show. You've been fired. Yeah. You've been fired this whole time. We are Spud and Joey. We are best friends, dads, and realtors. We also head up a running tribe here in Salt Lake City called Run With Mojo. On the weekends, we love exploring new trails and neighborhoods together. We aren't the fastest or the most skilled runners in the world. We're just two slightly out of shape dads that love a good trail run. We love running as much for the opportunity to clear our minds and have a good laugh as we do for the run itself. As runners, we know how mundane running on a treadmill can be. That's why we created the Come Run With Us project. So the next time you're on a treadmill, you'll have a cool trail to explore and a couple of buddies to run with. No matter what time of day or where you are in the world, you can always come run with us. Remember how Joey didn't pay you for two full weeks? Wait, yeah, uh, that, I do. That's you bringing us in? It's what do you want? People, we're on the Bonneville Shoreline was, Trail. Well, we're, in, we're in Draper. We're at the very south end yep, of he Salt Lake County. He always does it. Uh, this trail's pretty flat, so just, you know, keep, keep your treadmill at a nice flat uh, I don't level. know. I would say like a one or a two every now and then if you want to get crazy. Maybe a one or a two every now and again. You know, put it at like a, a six. Not on, the, on, not on the elevation change, but on the speed. And uh, settle in. We're, we're taking it easy. Spud left us on a hanger with this shirt. Uh, it's not a phase, it's a lifestyle. And then it has a emo studded belt. But it also Flamingo has, it has and, a band uh, name on it. It has a band name on it. It's all time low. I just want to say, I don't know where the band name is. So maybe it's covered, but I don't know. I can't, I can't see my back. Oh yeah, it does say all time low at the bottom. Thank you. Which, if you watched last episode, we talked about just how effing much we talk about emo on this show. <laughs> it's just and, because it's my life. And Spud, Spud was all, uh, on the text that we had when we were planning this run, he's like, I'm gonna be wearing a shirt. Nobody talk about the shirt. <laughs> Nobody better talk about the shirt in, in part one, because I'm gonna talk about it in part two. And so in part one, <laughs> I just go ham on how much we talk about emo, and then Spud's hanger for part two regarding the shirt was that it's an emo shirt. So now we're gonna talk more emo. <laughs> this way. Yeah. Let's, I don't what know. are you? Who are you? It's a, a status. It's a Wednesday morning. All I wanted to talk about was how this is like. It, it's it's funny because it all kind of goes full circle to the first episode of. So. Avril Lavigne, all-time low. Do we run Can't. up hills now? Is that our? Is that what we're doing? Is this uphill? Sorry, we're, sorry. we're just so, shaking everything up. Whatever, whatever we gotta do, we can do it. Um, right, Avril Lavigne, and all-time low. We're in Vegas a couple weeks ago. Me is too. Avril still out? Yeah, she's doing stuff. Does she have teeth? She looks awesome. She Does looks she? honestly the exact same, uh, except for hotter somehow <laughs> it doesn't make any sense that's just you're older now you know when like when we were young like like late high school whatever and we saw a woman that was 30 years old and we were like geez geriatric wow you are old you yeah. know and now like 30 looks like the youngest person on the planet i know now i see a woman pushy uh, the only way i know if if I can think she's hot is if she's pushing a stroller. I'm like, okay, you're probably at least of age, but then you're in Utah, so you're like, well, I don't even know if I can think that's hot. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just want to. So I think it's your perspective more over than well, Avril got hot. I don't know. I mean, you know, I gotta break this up because you know, maybe we got some viewers that are 30, 35, and maybe are interested in me. I'm 22, <laughs> so and I don't, I don't care. Okay, Unlike I like that. these guys. <laughs> I like I, that. Actually, Brenner, yeah, Brenner is hot and single. So yeah. if there are any hot single ladies. All the single well, ladies. I gave him a perfect end to reach out to my adorable, sweet, tender-hearted uh, niece. Tra oh my gosh, this is Anne's truck. <laughs> I gave him the perfect end to reach out to my beautiful, kind, sweet, tender-hearted, smart niece. And have you done anything with that, Brenner? Well, but I mean... <laughs> 
I was no. kind of worried because knowing that she's got. So I thought about it and I wondered if eight years in the future, she's... if we'd end up hating each other. So I decided not to ever call her. Oh, shut up, Mr. Sartorius. You're gonna. Uh, we... Here's the problem. She's got your blood. I cannot compete. I mean, I'm gonna go with Brenner on that. I'd be scared to death of anyone in your family. Because you played high school football yeah, in yeah. rural Utah in 1998. No, it's just, you know, you guys- So obviously your bloodline is, is, is perfection. Is here. Well, think of your dad did too in BYU. Okay. Oh, okay. And <laughs> like, it's in your bloodline. These hey, like you keep building up these your walls fighting around a narrative that suits you, so you can stay just comfy and and uh, you know not scared. You just keep doing that if you want to, or pick up the phone, be a little bit afraid, be yeah. a little uncomfortable, and do it anyways, and find out and stop wondering whether or not a girl will date you. Oh yeah, ask the question. Oh okay, I did that the other day <sighs> with my niece. No, do we need to have flip around? No. I mean, um, we went 10 minutes. It was like a, a we, chunk of what we did was okay. the other direction. Also, I, I think this is super dang annoying. near the exact same trail we did. You um, what? Well, we remember, I thought we were up this canyon just the other day. No. Uh, we were on Ant's Trail, but we've never been over this far. Okay. Um. Anyways. Yeah, I know it looks similar, but it's not. I, when I was at the gym the other day, I uh, I approached a girl in real life for the first time. Oh, good job. And uh, at the gym where nobody wants to be bothered. Unfortunately, she was underage. Oh, that's um, even creepier. Did you say fortunately? Unfortunately. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> she was 17. So like it's hard to, for me to tell. She's only 17. <laughs> I think there's a whole song about get how get that. that's that's allowed. I mean, hey, Brenner, I'm yeah. proud of you, man. This and is the, the truth of the matter is this. Yeah. You, you have to ask the question. Yeah. Because, oh, you're going to wonder about it all the time. If you ask the question and you get turned down, then you know. You, well, never, you don't ever, ever have to think about it again. <laughs> yeah, that's I did simple. it. And the problem with everybody, everybody's so afraid of rejection yeah. that they will just go through life living the dullest, you know, just existence ever because they're afraid to ask for what they want. Ah, so yeah. good job. And I, technically, I wasn't rejected. She said yes, but I'm 17. And I said, oh, never mind. I'm okay. My mom was like, why didn't you ask her when she turns 18? I'm like, I'm not getting on the wait list. That's creepy, man. So, man, you know. To be young, I forgot all about that being like a thing. How the, you, you the don't. creepy... You don't remember not dating underage girls or what? Well, no, I just forgot about like how there was all these creepy old dudes. They were always dating these younger dudes. And I thought it was so awkward and weird. Yeah, it was. And, and yet, like in Nephi, I feel like it was like a badge of honor to be like a, a 21, 22 year old still in Nephi dating 16 year olds. Somehow that was cool. Okay, I mean, I don't know if we'd go that far. I don't think any of us thought it was cool. Okay, I thought it was really cool when I was oh. 16 because I was like, oh my gosh, these old guys are so cool. I can't believe they want to hang out with these girls because I didn't quite understand that it was so creepy. And then as I got older, I thought it was it was creepy. So I guess that was my bad because I was like the girls. I got, wanted I got, to hang out with those guys. And so I thought it was awesome that they were around. I got lumped into a into a hometown hero category for a minute by some underclassmen, but I, I'd like to say I was never in the hometown hero category. Yeah, I never felt like you were a hometown hero. I, uh, <laughs> and a hometown hero is that dude that never leaves. Uh, Which is fine. You know, still you dragging Bane in his 20s and then, yeah, still in all the high school girls because he has a motorcycle, you know, or whatever. But, you know, he teaches his own. It's a little bit creepy. I, uh, I, uh, let's see. Oh, the concert. Can I finish the, that? Oh, please. Be done with please. it? Please, yeah. So, I just wanted to talk about how I got this shirt, and I thought it was the coolest shirt in the world, and then Katie was like, being all Katie, which I know I've said that, and I don't really know what it means, other than it was probably she said one random thing that hurt my feelings, and so then I 
lashed out a little bit and I was like, you're so jealous in my shirt. And now she makes fun of me every time I wear the shirt that it's, she, she's jealous and it's hilarious. Uh, there's a whole, whole. You're missing a lot of context here. No, no I'm not. You were pissed what, what drunk. Say, Brenner? Yeah, fill us in. You were pissed drunk. Uh, well. And you were like, I got this shirt. <laughs> and she probably was just like, what? How do you, you know, right, and well, then that hurt your feelings. I hadn't planned on going to that. So what happened is, as some of you may know. Oh, sorry. I quit drinking a while back. Well, I fell off the wagon at the Avril concert. I don't know what happened. I just decided I didn't care. So I was working so hard. That whole week sucked. I ended up going on vacation Thursday, Friday, working every single day, every hour of every day. And so Saturday, I had built it up on a, on this freaking pedestal. Pedestal of all I gotta do is get to Saturday. All I gotta do is get to Saturday. Saturday's gonna be amazing. Saturday's gonna be amazing. And we went to a dance recital for my uh, little niece down there. And then right after, it's like concert time. And I was like, okay. And I, I usually go into an evening <laughs> with a plan if I'm gonna like, you know, get crazy or not. This one, I was just like, no plan. Walk in, first little like we kiosk. We turn back. Hey, Brenner, we gotta turn back. First little kiosk I see. I'm just like, man can. I drank that thing in four seconds. Second man can was like, yep, this is what I'm gonna do. And uh, instantly regretted it. And instantly I uh, got into a crazy drunken stupor. Cause that, how long has it been since you? I don't drink? know, at least, I would say at least like six months. Maybe less, maybe more, I don't know. I hadn't drank in long enough. And then I'd, you know, been doing this cut and I think my calories were really low. I hadn't really eaten that day. I hadn't, <laughs> anyway, so. So it was instant smash. Yeah, so if we're gonna go that in depth. Well, I'm Which sorry. I definitely wasn't, uh, but. This is way better than whatever you had planned. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you had planned. Yeah. This is so much better. Yeah, I was gonna try to steer around certain things, but that's okay. I'm I sorry that I, I brought that I up. I made a mistake. Uh, I yelled at Katie. I got kicked out of a bar. Uh, oh, it was one of those I, uh <laughs> I climbed a fence. Uh, I hurt my leg. I'm sure you cried a little bit at some I point. I cried. Yeah. Uh, Katie, yeah. Oh man, she was so frustrated with me. And uh, yeah, I uh, I I don't. Emo's not dead. I don't. Emo's not dead. And, yes. Uh, Destruction. Anarchy. Yeah. It was so bad. It was so bad. I I only wanted to add that because you said Katie was being Katie, but you know. No, in her defense, Katie was actually really awesome. Right, yeah. And really kind. Oh, I did get us into the general admissions. I got us into GA. We had seats. And I just, it's like its like Joey said, you got to ask the question. I was like, I don't want to sit in these seats. And I was like, this is going to be a lame concert if we have to sit here. So I walk over to one of the like security guards. They say, hey, is there any way to like pay extra to get GA? Like is a ticket booth or something? And he looks at me and he's like, I can get you in GA if you want to pay something. And I was like, okay. And so I stood there all secretive, told Katie, we stood next to him. He like walked us down this aisle. He actually pointed at some seats and I said, oh no, we already have seats. I want a GA. And he goes, shut up and sit down. And I was like, okay, sir. <laughs> and then uh, I gave him 40 bucks and we got uh, GA. So we were able to go into the whole standing area. And uh, my favorite thing about the whole night. That'd be the opposite of what I do. I try to get out of GA to where I could sit down <laughs> and enjoy the show. Yeah, it, it was so fun. All Time Low was never on my radar as a band that I liked. They sing the Dear Maria Count Me In song. It's like, uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. Of course. Sing. I want to hear it. Of course I can't think of it. <laughs> it's, uh, I got your picture. You're coming, coming with me. me. Dear Maria, Maria count, count me in. in. Uh, it's that one. great. Anyway, they were way too happy for when I was a teenager to listen to. I was like, F this. This is not depressing enough. And so <laughs> I didn't really listen to them. But back to the Future Islands thing. Dude, I have discovered I love All Time Low. And they have like nine albums. So I've been jamming it for the last two weeks. Just enjoying this more happy you know, emo music, as some people would lump them into the category, but his, uh, 
his lyrics are way more uh kind of like party happy stuff instead of like you know i want to cry die. and crawl into a corner and die so it's it's good stuff but anyway that's that's all of my story in a nutshell and uh yeah so you were going to the hangar so you were going to leave us on with this shirt you insisted we don't even mention try not to get this shirt in the video in part one of this no i didn't care like about the you you the hanger wasn't even going to include any of the good stuff what was it going to be just that you went to an emo concert and bought that shirt yeah that was the hanger i mean last night when i was thinking about it, it sounded a lot cooler in my head <laughs> but now that we were saying it out loud it, i guess we were really lucky that Brenner, yeah. Thank you, Brenner, well, for giving life. I mean, Brenner did his story. job. Let's I just, be honest. Brenner did his job right there. I want to keep it honest because yeah. I felt that the context was so important. Yeah, I know. There was a lot there. So the hanger that Brenner and I left the listener on, like I did that, the Is listener. That, uh, <laughs> the listener on. <laughs> uh, the hanger that we left people on was that first Saturday of June, Brenner and I went down to utah county and ran in the utah valley half marathon great Which was experience. the same weekend as that concert so this actually works out perfect that's oh, why yeah. that's why i couldn't run the race yeah spud spud and brenner had signed up for it spud couldn't do it because he was doing this concert and i gladly accepted the the uh the ticket and went and ran it with brenner so you know the first marathon I ever did was the Utah Valley. It's one of Spud's favorite races. Spud, how many times have you done uh, the marathon, half marathon? I mean, Gosh. you always do the 1K with your kids with it. Like I the race director knows Spud by name. I mean, this is, just, this is Spud's race. Hiram is a good man. No, it's it, honestly, I've probably done it like, I don't know, at least 10 times, maybe more. 10 years you've done this race. Yep. And this is probably the second biggest Marathon, half marathon in the state behind oh, yeah, St. George? I would say it's got to be up there, yeah. It's maybe, be from a, maybe from just a body count, it's the biggest. Oh, yeah, there's a ton of people. So you run right down Provo Canyon. Uh, this year was the first year I had done it where they they didn't just run on yeah, the road. Yeah, they switched it up, I heard. They cut over onto the trails, you know. And did you like that or no? Uh, I actually did. It was way more scenic, and I wasn't, like, racing on this one. So it gets does get a little congested when it cuts over onto the Provo River Trail. Yeah, that's the only thing I first thought of, was like, that's kind of weird. Oh, oh we we're almost dead. got good on, video. On. We're dead. <sighs> okay, so, so, uh, Brenner and I, I assume with, you know, this basically being Spud's race, we've sponsored this race before, we've had booths, there's nothing that Spud doesn't know about this race, and, you know, Spud's always telling, Telling all of us how he gets everybody into running. He get, got his nephew into running. We've all heard the story, how special that was. And We're together like three times a week, so obviously I can go in depth on stuff. I see where this is yeah. going. I see. Um, I see how you said that. Taking Brenner under his wing, they run. <laughs> they run together three, four times a week in the morning. There's just so much time to prepare his young understudy oh, for this. There's for a this race. Mouse. What? There's a little mouse. Oh, it's so cute. It? That's not a mouse. What is it? Oh, then? gross. Get the hell out the way, mouse. Dude, he's just like, he's just moving is this our, Is this our first fan? Yeah. Wants to come on a run with us? Yeah. Um, he so wants. back to the story. Brenner, let me, let me get up behind Spud. I really need him. I need him here in the tone of my voice. <laughs> I can hear you from there, Joey. <laughs> Hey, hold on, I gotta, Spud, you take this camera for a hot sec? I gotta, I got a shoe. Oh gotta, yeah, your shoe is done. Can we swap to um, do, so I've got camera B. Sorry, just fine. ruining the show over here, guys. Sorry. You just do it. Are you, okay. did you want to do that or not? Yeah. You need a glove to wipe your nose on? <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed these gloves from Joey and they have snot all over them. Yeah, I ran with them yesterday. It was cold yesterday. But honestly, like, I, without these gloves, my fingers would be freezing because they're still a little chilly. Okay, so, so we're meeting at, uh, th this race is huge. There's, this is huge. There's thousands and thousands of people at the start line just for the half. And uh, 
you meet at a mall. I didn't tell Provo. him how to fuel, if it makes you feel any better. I told him what I would fuel with. Yeah. So we meet at, Brenda and I are going to meet at this mall. And again, the morning of, I slightly miscalculated my alarm going off. I did that this morning. Uh, a little late. I, I just miscalculated how much time I was going to need to get there the night before I set the alarm. If I fall asleep on the couch and then go into my room, I set the alarm on my way past. And I'm, when I'm a little and you're in like a stupor because it's yeah. like midnight. Yeah. I just say a random time yeah. for the alarm to go off. There's no, there's no math <laughs> associated with it. Oh, we've all been there. So, so anyways, I, uh, I get in the car, I, I get up on the alarm on race morning, you know, get up, get in the car and realize, oh, like I'm gonna be cutting it pretty close to get there, but I should be able to get there. So I get there and, um, there was a delay on the bus, so this, the line to get on the bus was like three blocks long. That's so crazy. It, Usually it was just, they're so dialed like in on mile. those buses. That sucks. It, it was insane. Just kept going, kept going, and finally get there and meet, meet up with Brenner, and the line's not moving, you know, and I start going like, oh, I wonder if they've got a problem with the buses are getting up there. Like, I wonder if we're gonna be able to do this thing. And there's just so many people. And I could tell Brenner's a, a little nervous. And I wasn't exactly in a state to- uh, To comfort him? To comfort him, nor did I, did did it, was I, I even I, think it was that even on my radar of something that I needed to do. You know, this is just, I put zero thought into this half marathon. It was like, you know, just before. Well, it was kind of last minute. Like, yeah, I think we was like, oh, yeah, I'll do it all day before that I couldn't do it. And I had a bib that I didn't want to defer again. So, so meet up with Brenner and he's like, man, I, I just, I just didn't know there was going to be this many people. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he's got like, he's got his, which maybe I shouldn't uh, discredit you for this, but he's got like his, his water belt, everything, like he's going out for a run. You know, I'm like, oh man, like there's, they're gonna divvy out like plenty of water and stuff. Like, well, I can't tell you how many times I've pre-filled my water bottles to go up because I'm so paranoid they're not gonna have water at the start line. So that's very normal. Okay. For an overthinker? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, but, I wish I wouldn't have brought mine. Why? I wish I wouldn't have brought mine. I know, I said why? Oh, well. Just because I feel like I kept getting in the way. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've done that and been like, well, if we get up there and no water, ha, this guy <laughs> won. So but uh, I brought, I just brought a bottle of water in my drop bag and. Oh yeah, that's a good plan too. Just that's, have that and yeah, drink I never it. And then about that. I sent the bottle yeah. of my empty bottle in my drop bag to that's the bottom so that then I didn't have to carry an unnecessary water bottle the whole race. So. Um, anyways, it's been so long since we talked about this, there, but uh, just each thing that, what, what are some examples, Brenner? Help me remember. Well, I mean, I legitimately thought it was going to be like 200 people. <laughs> yeah. I told you it was the largest one in Utah and the, it sells out and it's got like 2000 people that run Apparently the half you alone. Apparently you didn't. I did. Uh, well, if he did, I don't recall. <laughs> Yeah, it was, I, I love that race because of how big it is. Remember how I told you the finish line is like a party and a big parade? Oh, and yeah. And there's a shit ton of people there? Yeah, they're not just like the people that are standing there. They're the people that were just running it. Well, we'll get to the finish line later. I think, uh, what else are some things? Uh, we did you did you do the fuel that I told you about? Did you take your, I told you to eat oatmeal like a half hour to an hour before the run and then take a goo for every... Maybe every, you know, two miles. Did you do any of that? No. <laughs> I, uh, That's exactly I was, what I told you I would do. I was way more worried about All right, here, um, getting, getting there on time because I thought that we weren't going to be waiting for an hour and a half. Um, well, so traditionally you don't. Traditionally you, you get to the, the start, you bus up, and then you have to wait for you a, wait up like there. two hours at the start line. It was the opposite. Yeah, that's so weird. And another thing he wasn't prepared for 
the amount of waiting that was gonna take place. Oh yeah, remember when I told you like you have two full hours of uh, the starting line, that's the only thing I hated about half marathons yeah. is you're awake for like four hours before you get to run. Yeah, not, not this time. So Man. what about the finish line, Brenner? I just want to point out that I feel like, in my defense, we had talked about a lot of You have created things. a good defense. Maybe this was just, Brenner was nervous on race day and forgot some of these things. That, no, it's know. okay. I know how Brenner's mind works, and it works a lot like mine, and so we forget <laughs> things very easily. But yeah, what is uh, your finish line story? So, finish line, you know, the... Uh, the run to the finish line is brutal because it's like oh i hate it i was just telling straight you, yeah how it feels uphill yep from when you get out of the canyon to the finish line it sucks and uh so i, I was definitely struggling by then like i did not have a very good race unfortunately well but um i thought it was great your time like well no i mean i, I beat my pr by a long shot because my only pr was from jackpot so i was going slow but I, uh, you know, I had to stop to go to the bathroom, which sucked. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I've been struggling all day, it felt like. Um, but by the time finish line was coming up, I was like, I do not want to be last, you know? Yeah. So I was just. Which I think is impossible in that one because <laughs> yeah. there's like, yeah. There's, yeah. Some, there's some people that do that one. You probably finished in front of like 1,200 <laughs> people from the bottom. <laughs> I think I got like, I was like within 10 spots of the of the last place. No, not a that chance. That can't be true. Not, I'm looking at it. I can show you my stats. Put the, put the stats right here. I guarantee you're not that. Stats. What was your time? Uh, two. Yep. Nope. There's people that are in the well into the threes. A lot of people, well into the threes, my man. Wait, maybe it was three. No, it was two. No, because I thought you said it was like two. It was high It two. was high twos, but it was still in the twos. <laughs> like 255 or something. Yeah, because I remember being super proud that you were able to get it under three for your first half <laughs> and with no training. And Are we running up hills now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying yes, to Yes, Grandma, that. we are. <laughs> well, that's what Joey sounds that's like. Joey me. voice. Are we running up hills <laughs> now, <laughs> boy? <laughs> Well, you asked me that earlier. You know, and I got offended because if I'm not running, they're like, come on, take up the pace, Renner. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's why I am running. You're complaining. Yeah, I know you'll learn with Joey. You just go with the flow. Yeah, you're going to be wrong no matter what. Okay, yeah. whatever you do, I'm not going to like it. Oh, uh, well. So, what I, happened to the finish? Yeah, line? what happened okay. to the finish? Because right now, I feel like. We've made a very shitty argument about Spud not preparing you. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I, it's been so long though, I've lost lost some of the details. Yeah. There had to be some good stuff, because yeah. in, in Brenner's defense, I really didn't go in depth at all on a lot of stuff. I went in depth on the fuel, uh, the fact that it's just a really cool, ginormous race, and how crappy it is to wait for four hours to run a half marathon when you could have already ran like a full double that. If you uh, give me two seconds, yeah. I think I wrote down a note about. Well, you, there yeah, was no, like a bunch of times. There, if, if, this is going to be made for terrible television, but there were multiple times I'm like, wait, wait, Spud didn't. Spud didn't tell you that? Or, or, or wait, hold on. Wait, what? Wait, you didn't know that? Like, wait, wait. Spud didn't explain this? I will actually say that you, when it was your first time doing something, you asked a lot of good questions to figure out details that I probably wouldn't have remembered to tell you. And so. Well, that was my first fall, and I was, I wanted to crush, and I was. And I feel very like you, you were very prepared because. Yeah, I was. You interrogated me multiple times. And I felt like that was where, like that's my might be your your superpower. And Brenner just unfortunately doesn't have that that question inquisitive nature about him just yet. We're gonna instill it in him though. Oh yeah, we'll get it. We can teach him how to ask for the business. So back to the finish line, eh? Yeah, what'd you find out? So well, 
I, I, I don't have the note. Oh, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. Uh, we are prepared. Throw out the argument. I mean, there were things I forgot, obviously, because I remember us like thinking it was hilarious on the bus ride. Let me see if I took a note. Um, but uh, so finish line, probably about a mile out. I uh, I throw on through the fire and flames. And man, Ooh. what a hype song. Yeah. You know? And so I just thug it out. I sprint it. Nice. And uh, man, it felt good. I I was really, I was dying. And Dude, I was good. chafing. Good job, though. Did you um, not do any uh, like Vaseline or anything to nope, chafe? Nope, I, I don't know why, but I didn't wear any. Oh, that's okay. By the time. Yeah, it's such a hot day that you tend to, to get a lot of chafage on that one. Yeah, so but I, I don't think I told you to do that. So well, I should have known. I mean, I I chafe on a on an eight mile run, you know. Oh yeah. So, and I I think I just was like, oh, it's fine because I'm wearing my tights. Look at this real fast. This is so pretty. It's so pretty. They've got oh, look at that. That's goals right there, having a little porch on the back in the backyard. Yeah, you know, it's 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 not as great as you think. You think you use it all the time. You end up using it about twice a year and your kids leave all the crap on it and you just end up being like wow i'm glad i spent twenty thousand dollars on this this deck well i mean you know it, like just me and the boys we'd yeah, be, you, we'd still, be you still think you're gonna be doing it but you go out there you start the grill up and then you go back in because it's so hot you know so unless you do a covered porch with misters and a fan then i can see you hanging out so yeah, it is on the shady side of the house, so in the evenings I can see going out there and hanging out. We spend a ton of time in our backyard on the, in the evenings. We're out there playing golf and, you know, enjoying it, and it's shaded from the trees. I do love your backyard. Your backyard is super dialed. Okay, I deleted my notes if I had any on it as well. So, uh, Spud, you did good. Trevin, no, I, I really you. didn't. If, I, if I'm being honest, like, I did not prepare him at all other than food wake up time and what a shitty hanger we've left people on I'm, I'm sorry you know what this is what we needed we need to be better whatever uh, my story was great if only because, because brenner. brenner saved the day and i was i was expecting brenner to save the day on this one as well because as i got into it i knew man that you set it up so good I really that was did. probably the best i know like setup and it fell so flat and brenner just he jumped and hit the Hit, hit, hit the, the thingy that has the net <laughs> the and with his head. Let me start fresh. Brenner was wearing penny loafers and Levi jeans <laughs> to the race. Uh, he hadn't eaten in two days. Um, he, uh, he brought a boom box instead of, <laughs> instead of, instead of water, instead of water <laughs> and just and headphones. Wow. Uh, Brenner, you were so <laughs> ill-prepared. He was, yeah. And uh, that's all your fault. I but. thought you guys recorded like a bunch of video and I felt like everybody was being very hush hush about the we hat. We were because we had all this material and now I've forgotten all of it. But that's yeah. me, you know, I forgive and I forget. So just like that. And so that is funny though, because I do remember I asked Brenner about it and he was just like, yeah. And I, I remember him kind of skirting the issue and I just am so, I'm the same way with my mind. So. Me and Brenner went on a tangent and never went back. And so I didn't actually hear about any of it. But well, we were saving it and just kept forgetting to talk about it. Yeah. We made notes of another thing from the race. Remember, I said right, it into my it phone, out. Brenner. Oh, Remember? yeah, you did. But I looked in my reminders where it had been. I must have deleted it thinking, oh. no chance I forget this. No so sorry, shot. people. Yeah. Sorry, people. It's on me. Well, so I would say... Uh-oh. <laughs> Are we holding up somebody's construction project? Uh, I don't think that's possible because there was no signs or anything. Well, no, I'm saying, like, I think they're going to close it. That would be funny. Yeah, they can wait. Yeah, definitely not going to worry about that. you got to have signs up oh. if you're going to be closing stuff. you got to close the streets. Uh, let's apologize for this show. Hey, I'm really sorry you guys had to listen to a Joey and Brenner story. That's the first one. Uh, it sucked. It was the only story Brenner and I told today, because both of part one and two, I mean, you just, we, 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 I mean, it was just all you. Well, talent has to take over when it knows it's needed. Yeah, that's fair. 
We talked inside out two on part one. Oh, just go watch that for the review of one of the greatest films of all we time. We shared Father's Day experiences. Mine, I told mine in about 45 seconds. And then Spud took the rest of the show talking about <laughs> Inside Out 2. Uh, it was really important to me. So check that out. This one, just, sorry. I, I mean, listen to the first half where Spud goes into detail about his Avril Lavigne show. I thought that was decent. Uh, but then... I thought this episode was fun. Brenner and I really fell short on bringing I mean, the I heat. I like knowing about the half and stuff. Why. It made me happy. I'm really proud of you doing it. Joey, thanks for stepping in and taking care of my nephew because I feel like I 100% had to ditch out and I had no idea that concert and that thing fell on the same weekend because for some reason I thought it always landed on like the 6th or the 7th. And so I remember Katie asked me about the concert when she bought tickets like last year. And I was like, uh, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I have anything. And then boom, I had a ticket already ready for the run and the concert. So Joey, thank you for taking it for Worked me. Worked out great for me. Worked out great for me. I needed to get a little, a little swift run in. And I'd already deferred the year before because I couldn't do the year before because of some reason. We did the Deseret News, so I think I just decided to do that. I care about diving. Um, I do want to add one last thing. Hurry, this oh, one's about means, to die. That means that I, um, I did the 5K before it was super late at night, so I got like no sleep before the half. Oh, I forgot you did the and 5K. So that was I did tell thing. him that was a dumb idea. I, I signed up for it, and then he was like, hey, that's not a good idea. But yeah. He already, he already did it. So That's so, okay. Uh, hey, thanks for coming on a run with us. Yeah, thanks for coming on a run with us. Look at this view. Y'all come up here. If you have a special someone, come up here and like make out in your car. I think it's a cute make out point. Spud will be lurking. <laughs> <laughs> Spud Thank will be you for lurking. coming on a run with us. Like, subscribe, subscribe, like, do all the things. And uh, we love you. We appreciate you. Thanks See for you coming next time. on a run with us. See you next time.